best friend is a Canadian farmer. <laughs> you know, she's literally in Radville, Saskatchewan right now. Um, you know, and it, when talking to her family and then hearing how we work with rural farmers, like, you know, there's so many interconnectivities and, and how do you approach these conversations in the right way? I'm still looking if anyone knows the right avenues or the right forums to be able to make those connectivities for everyday people. Because once you make that connection, people get it. You know, when it, once it affects your food and what you're eating, you have so much more of an appreciation for where the food is coming from. Um, so I think that's just an important point. It's, tu it's tough in the, with, with what we're facing, many people with the cost of living and that kind of stuff, right? It's, it's hard. Really? You want things to be cheaper. You don't want to pay more for food. Right. Yeah. I, I think there's some really interesting lessons to be taken from the cocoa industry and, and, and what's happened there with sort of, you know, fair trade. And, you know, I don't think it's been taken far enough. And it's not been taken far enough because the, the big five chocolate companies are very, very powerful. It's all about money at the end of the day. But it needs to come down to, you know, the governments need to uh, apply some power to conscious consumers. We want to be fair, I think. I think there is a level of consciousness around the food we buy. If we know that it's come from farm to table and we have to pay a little bit of a premium for that and that, you know, spreads the wealth, I think people will embrace that. But the actual m communications around that are just mm -hmm. minimalized. Of course they're minimalized because you've got big conglomerates who can just pay to suppress that. Mm. I think there just needs to be a little bit of innovation around it. I think a little bit of lobbying. Um, social media is a really amazing tool to just raise the awareness. Um, so yeah, I think, I think it's a great I question. Love, I love hearing you talk. <laughs> so nice. I was just going to say that to him. Um, but no, I think I find the same problem in fashion where we, we want to sort of outcast fast fashion as the bad guy. And you know, when I'm talking about more sustainable or greener practices in fashion, you can't forget about the single mother with five children who can only afford to go to H&M. I'm sorry, fast fashion is the only option. And it's the same in food. Um, you know, when I was growing up, my, we ate McDonald's a lot. My mom knew it wasn't the best for us, but sometimes that was all we could get because it was cheap and cheerful and easy. So you need to find a way to, to have these conversations without excluding anybody. What's your answer to that? That's so interesting that, to, to have that authenticity and to, and to talk about your early life. And then, what's your answer? How do you talk to families? You, you just don't leave anyone out. You understand that it's so much more complex than, oh, only buy organic and only shop at Whole Foods because that's great. It's not. It's, yeah. it's not an option for everybody, and that's just the reality of it. So then we need to go outside of the individuals, look at government, what kind of policies can be implemented around healthy food choices, particularly in schools for young people. It's so much bigger than the individual consumer, but the individual consumer is a, such a massive piece. And I think the coalition of farms, sorry, I know you've got a question. I know you've got a question too, but the coalition of farms is important. You know, farmers having the strength to say, no, 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 no. We're all going to stay at the same price. We're all going to try and raise our value and be respected. And that needs support around, you know, from all of us. I hate to say, I don't think we have time for any more. Oh, we have you? to. That are gentleman we, is really saying? patient. Yeah. One more question? One more. OK, One great. More. Oh, um, yeah, can sorry. we mix the questions into two? Yeah, can we do two at the same time? Two at the same time? Right, mine's very quick. It actually follows on from that nice comment from the Canadian. You need to go on the government level. So in Switzerland, we pay $100 for a kilo, uh, 2.2 pounds in, in <laughs> American, uh, British pounds. Okay, not the money, the weight. We pay a very high price for, for meat here. It's subsidized. We subsidize the small holdings. I know it's a different level, but it's done through governmental level. And when I go back to my home country in Britain and Wales and Scotland, all the farmers are now trying to cut out the middleman, sell their produce locally and so mm. on. And this is really a way in the, in the richer countries to go to really give the farmers respect, which is what you say, so they can move forward. So it needs to be at a, a higher level, a policy level. Great, Absolutely. thank you for that, that's wicked. And that gentleman there, uh, yeah, just stand up, yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm involved from Vital Capital. We, uh, we take that microphone. microphone. You go. Yeah. I'm Nimrod from uh, Vital Capital. We uh, invest in food in Africa, uh, heavily invested, um, uh, and all through smallholder uh, farmers. We work with 40,000 smallholder farmers. Uh, we've talked about, and I heard you talking about the success, the needs. Of course, there's a lot of needs and the success of the smallholder farmers. Um, I think that if we want to propel this industry, we have to talk about the success of the investors as well. Uh, and there's a lot of investors, private investors and private funds like us that invest through smallholder farmers and do good returns for them for the investors. I wanted to ask if you emphasize this as well, because I think this is the opportunity to 
mobilize a lot of uh, private investment into the industry. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. You need um, the success stories. You need the proof of concept to, you know, de-risk in some sense for...